Hello, everybody. Welcome to Renewal's Good Friday service. Um, we're going to stand and sing together, Man of Sorrows. Man of sorrows, Lamb of God, by his own betrayed the sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus laid. Silent as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, he took a crown of thorns. salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto of heaven, God's own Son, to purchase and redeem, and reconcile the very ones who nailed Him to that tree. cross my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me, whom the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me, whom the Son sets free, oh, is free. my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out alleluia praise and honor unto thee praise and honor unto thee Praise and honor unto Thee. Well, good evening. Praise and honor indeed to our God as we come in this very special night, as we um, celebrate this holy weekend, as we look forward to Easter on Sunday, we take time tonight 
to solemnly reflect on the great price that was paid for us. Take time to reflect and to meditate on the great sacrifice that our God would make on our behalf. I just want to welcome you if you're visiting, if you're a guest um, here at Renault Church. We are so happy you are here. It is our joy and our pleasure to get to celebrate this special night and this special, special season with you um, as we look at, at what God has done. And so I just want to thank you for coming. Um, we're glad that you're here and hope that you are blessed by our worship tonight. And anytime we gather as a body, we always do it in the name of our God. And so we're going to begin worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're not going to take a moment to um, reflect on the great price that was paid and the great tragis, tra tragedy and the great travesty um, of what happened to Jesus on that fateful day when he was ultimately crucified for us. And so we're going to speak responsively um, a little bit about that, about this great, great injustice that was done to Jesus. So I'm going to be speaking the words that are in white, and I invite us all together to speak the words that are in yellow. This man was betrayed by one he trusted. How could he? This man was disowned by his closest friends. How could they? This man's trial was a parody of justice. How could they? This man was sentenced to death while a murderer was set free. How could they? This man was whipped and abused, mocked and spat on. How dare they? This man had to carry his own instrument of death. How dare they? This man was crucified between two criminals. How could this happen? Now when we think about that night tonight, when we think about that day when Jesus gave it all, um, it's easy to make that just a story in history, something that happened, even a good story, and to remove ourselves from what was going on and not realize that it was because of us and for us that this took place. And so we're going to now confess our sins um, using these same words that we just spoke, reflect on how our sins, our shortcomings, our lack of love for God and for others led Jesus to that cross. So once again, I'll speak the words in white, and together we'll speak the words in yellow. This man was betrayed by one he trusted. I betray Christ when I ignore his call to follow him. This man was disowned by his closest friends. I disown Christ when I'm ashamed to share my faith. This man's trial was a parody of justice. I make a mockery of Christ when I fail to speak up for the oppressed. This man was sentenced to death while a murderer was set free. I am guilty through the neglect of my earthly callings and vocations. This man was whipped and abused, mocked and spat on. I have taken Christ's name in vain. This man had to carry his own instrument of death. I am guilty of causing suffering to those I love through my selfish laziness. This man was crucified between two criminals. I was the one who deserved such punishment. The reality is that our sin is great. But the love of Jesus is far greater. Because while we have so often fallen short, we have so often failed to love God and to love others, Jesus looked at us and chose to love. To choose not to come one to reign over, but one to give his life. And it is by his death, it is by his sacrifice on that cross that your sins are forgiven. So know this for certain, that by Jesus' work, his death and resurrection, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts for our reading tonight. Our crucifixion account of Jesus comes from the book of John, chapter 19. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, 
and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We now continue in song as we reflect on that beautiful head of Jesus, that perfect Son of God who is scorned and crucified for us. Oh, sacred head now wounded with grief and shame weighed down now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown O sacred head what glory what bliss till now was thine yet though Above all joy 
always be when in thy body broken I the sweet safety hide O Lord of life desiring the glory now to see beside thy cross expiring I breathe my soul to thee I think growing up I always thought Good Friday was a little weird feels like a weird thing to start off a uh, message on Good Friday with um Somebody once uh, made a comment to me. They said, Good Friday is like the day we pretend Easter didn't happen. <laughs> we just put on a sad face and we pretend that there was no resurrection. Um, and, and as Christians, we believe that the only reason that Jesus matters, it all is centered on the fact that he rose. Paul says so himself. It says, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then all of this is for nothing. And for those of us who, who profess Jesus, who, who say that you can have life in him, we are of all people most to be pitied. And so the question is, why do we celebrate Good Friday? <laughs> if our hope, if our life is based on the resurrection, why does this night matter? Why do we take time to put on the sad face and look at the cross and remember? Now, I think that part of the reason is that because as people, as humans, we are very bad at dealing with and looking at and sitting with the consequences of our actions. I, I can't tell you how many times I apologize to somebody and the, the answer I want to hear is like, oh, no, it really didn't make a difference, right? It's fine. I don't want people to say, you know what, actually that was really hard. <laughs> I, I, I can acknowledge sometimes like, yeah, I screwed up, I messed up, but I, I, in the back of my head I'm hoping it really didn't matter, right, it was a minor thing. Right? And so sometimes we need to be forced to reconcile with, forced to look at those things that we've done and, and the actual cost and the consequences of it. Um, when I was growing up, my first dog, I remember, was a little pug named Maggie. It's this little black pug, cutest little face. Now, Maggie had a really bad habit of not going to the bathroom outside. And so I remember um, one day when Maggie decided to go number two um, in a bedroom and then, you know, goes about its day. She's just running around the house fine. And so we end up finding this. And I remember my dad dragging this, <laughs> this dog and shoving its face like inches from this and saying, you did this. <laughs> you made this happen. Right? He wanted to the, the connect the dots. This issue was caused by you. And as people, we, we so often, we just kind of want to, we just kind of want to move on. Right? It's really easy to say, hey, I screwed up my bad. Um, I sinned or, or whatever. But then we kind of want to move on. We don't want to actually look at how this hurt people, how this affected people, what had to be done about it. Sometimes we want to look for quick remedies. We want to just try to move past, um, and especially if we can make it up to somebody. Um, I remember my, my brothers and I, we'd always, you know, horse around and stuff. And I remember one time my brother Nick and I, we were playing, and I accidentally, I forgot what we were fighting over, but I accidentally hit him, and he started crying. And immediately I realized, oh, no, he's going to tell my parents. And so I told him, no, you can hit me back. Here, hit me, and then we're fair, and then we don't have to tell anybody. Like, just get it over with, and then we'll be, we'll be even. And so we're really good at, at just moving past, right? And so I think part of the reason that we spend time on Good Friday reflecting is to realize that that new life, that, that hope that we have in Jesus, that it came at a cost, that while we can celebrate the joys of the resurrection, we can celebrate the joy of new life, we can celebrate the promises that death no longer claims us, it's important that we don't take for granted what had to happen to get us here. And we read that, that account in, in the Gospel of John, and you think about Jesus, who comes to this earth, and he comes to show people love. His whole mission, he, he comes and he, he's going around and he's, proclaiming good news, and he's welcoming people who were far off, people who had no hope. 
And he's healing people who were, who were crippled, people who were blind, people who had all sorts of issues. And he's, he's doing all of these things, and, and he rides into Jerusalem, and people are, are hoping that this is the guy. And it's that Jesus you jump forward, and then we read about the same Jesus who, who rode into Jerusalem with praises of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, is the same one who, who gets on trial and is mocked, ridiculed. He saved others. Why can't he save himself? And, and they, they pierced his head with thorns. Just every bit of humiliation, every bit of pain was put upon this man who came only to bring love and hope and perfection. So when we look at the cross, when we reflect on Good Friday about what this is, it's a call not only to look at Jesus, but also to look at us. Because like I said earlier, it's easy to just take this story as one that just happened in the past. And a good story, right? Great, Jesus died. It was a good thing for us. Awesome. But to forget about that it was for us that he had to die for. I found this uh, painting. This is, well, it's actually a picture drawing. This is from a guy named Frank Koshy in 1974 called Crucifixion. This was donated to the Smithsonian of American Art Museum. Here it is. It's very abstract. It's with pen, felt, charcoal. You can see there a bloody Jesus. His face is marred. It looks kind of skull-like. You can see his rib cage. He's strung out, and you can see blood around his chest, around his hands and his feet. But what struck me about this picture is this might be one of the only pictures of the crucifixion that I've seen where not only do you see Jesus on a cross, but you see Jesus with the people he died for. You can't see Jesus on that cross without looking at the crowd. At the bottom, you have the Pharisees, those religious leaders who hated him, despised him. You have the mobs, the crowds, like I said, who, who at one point when Jesus rides in, there's crowds yelling his praises, hooray, and then on Good Friday yelled, crucify him, crucify him. And it's this Jesus who ultimately went to that cross, who ultimately sacrificed himself for those people and for us. And it's sometimes really uncomfortable when we are completely honest with how sinful we are. Like I said, it's so easy to move past. Uh, many of you might have seen a few years ago, there was the big case of Larry Nassar. He was the U.S. and Michigan State gymnastics trainer who did some unspeakable things to gymnasts. What I found fascinating amongst all of the tragedy is that um, at the end of his trial, before he was ultimately put in jail, all of the victims had a chance to speak and to share the damage and the hurt that he had caused them. And he asked the judge if he could step out of the room and leave. And you think about it, this man had already done all of these things, and yet he couldn't bear to hear back to himself how bad it was. I want nothing more than just to move past. I don't want to hear how sinful and broken I am. And, and we had that confession earlier. You think about, if we're really honest, how often we have failed to love God. How often we have just chased our own passions. How often we've seen people in need around us and chosen, you know what, this is more comfortable for me, so I'm just going to stay in my box. The reality is that we are all far more sinful than we could ever really comprehend. And if we weren't, then it wouldn't have taken that. And there's something extremely difficult about having somebody else pay for what you've done wrong, if you were ever on a sports team and if somebody messed up, they made the whole team run laps, right? You hated it because, again, you, can I reconcile? Can I make it right? And the reality is that as human beings, we are so far from God. We, we have sinned so much to our core in our fallen human nature. Without Jesus, we would choose our own sins, our own passions every single time. That there is no possible way that we could make it right on our own. And so Jesus, the Holy Son of God, had to come in human flesh and he had to give it all. And so we look at this, not brushing past the consequences, that it, this perfect 
blessed man who came only pronouncing forgiveness, only pronouncing love, only pronouncing hope and a future. This is the Jesus that for us had to die. And every one of those sins, everything that we had ever done wrong and everything that we will do wrong, led him to that cross. But we rejoice that in doing so, because he was obedient, because he was perfect where we weren't, because he was just where we were unjust, because he was loving where we were unloving, our sins stayed there with him. And they were buried in his tomb and left for good. Because when he rose, they didn't come with him. They stayed buried in the ground. And so as we reflect on this night, as we look forward to Easter again, because that's ultimately where our hope is, I just wanted to share this quote from uh, an early church father. His name was um, St. Athanasius. He was in Alexandria. He was a very early Christian. He, he really was a champion of the Christian faith throughout still our language, our understanding today. And at one point he was reflecting on Good Friday and he said, if any Christian should be asked, why did Jesus have to die on a cross for us? He said, the answer is this. And he goes on to say, there's only one way which somebody's executed where their arms are outstretched, welcoming all in. Brothers and sisters, when we look at that cross, we see the Son of God holy and perfect. Even in his final moments, he's still caring for his mother, making sure she's looked after. Behold your son. Behold your mother. But he did that to fulfill the scripture and to ultimately bring reconciliation between God and you and me. That we might be made perfect in God's eyes because our sin, our shortcomings, all of our messes and our problems were left there. And what we are left with is open arms embracing us and welcoming us in to grant us forgiveness and a blessed hope and a blessed future. As we look forward to Easter, may we look with honest eyes the cost that it took. It didn't come free. They say there's no such thing as a free lunch. And there's no such thing as a free salvation. It cost Jesus, but he did it for you, and now you belong to him. We look forward to Easter when we celebrate his triumph and his victory. But may this be the meditation for our hearts tonight, tomorrow, and until that glorious day. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we're going to close out with um, what's called a tenebrae service. Um, it's a service of darkness. Um, it's a, a service where we're reminded that Jesus, who is the light of the world, came and was extinguished for a while. This dark world, this world full of confusion and hurt, Jesus came to bring light, but that light was killed because, as John says, people chose the darkness. They love the darkness more than the light. And so what we're going to close out with here is we're going to have the final words of Jesus from the cross. In the Gospels, we have seven different things that we are told Jesus said while he was on the cross. And so we're going to hear one of those. We're going to have a candle put out, and this room is going to get progressively darker um, in between readings and candles, we're going to continue to sing to remind ourselves of the great price that Jesus paid on our behalf. Now, just so you know, after the final song, or after the final word, word number seven, the final candle is going to go out. It's going to be pretty dark up here. There should be enough light to get out. Um, after that final candle and after the lights come down, there's going to be a large thud symbolizing the closing of the tomb. So if you have little ones, I just want to give you a heads up. There's going to be a loud noise coming. And then after that final darkness and after that final shutting of the tomb, we're all going to silently walk out straight through those back doors out into the world that Jesus has called us to love. If you need to come back to use the restroom or to grab anything, that's okay too. But we're going to silently leave and then the doors will be unlocked and you're welcome to come back in. But we're going to continue now with our service of darkness as we remember Jesus' final moments on that cross. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I hear the 
Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. One of the criminal, cr criminals who were hanged rowed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spots and melt the heart of stone. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Elo, Elo, Lema Sabkanthin, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. After this, Jesus knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. Praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this
this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last breath. 